Part 1. Questions 1 to 8. Directions. In this part, you will hear 8 short announcements, or instructions. There is one question for each announcement or instruction. For each question, choose the right answer, A, B, C or D. Then, on the answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer that you have chosen. Now, let's listen to an example. On the recording, you will hear. Hello. This is the travel agency returning your call. You left a message about the holiday you've booked, asking which meals are included in the cost during your stay at Sunny Hotel. Lunch and dinner are free but if you wish to have breakfast in the hotel, you will need to pay an extra amount of money, depending on what you order. Let me know if I can help you with any other information. Goodbye. On the test book, you will read, which meal is not included in the price of the holiday. A. Breakfast. B. Lunch. C. Dinner. D. All. The correct answer is. A. Breakfast. Now, let's begin with the first question. First, you'll have some time to read the questions 1 to 8. Question 1. Thank you for calling Jiffy Computer Services, your neighborhood computer sales and repair service. Is your computer giving you problems? No problem. We'll have it up and running in no time. Our technicians are available to help you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. To speak with tech support, please stay on the line. If you, if you would like to purchase a new computer, Press 1 to speak with the next available sales consultant. To make an appointment for a consultation in your home or office, press 2. For billing questions, press 3. To hear this menu again, press 0. Question 2 Welcome to the first lecture in our series, we are fortunate to have as our speaker tonight Dr. Clotilda Swanson, who is visiting us as part of her book promotion tour. Dr. Swanson will talk with us tonight about her newest book, Small Business Success. She will explain the innovative business system that she has outlined in her book, a system that will result in success for any small businessman or woman. After the talk, Dr. Swanson's book will be available for sale at the back of the room near the exit sign. Books are $25 each. Unfortunately, because of unforeseen circumstances, refreshments will not be served this evening. Don't miss next month's lecture on Thursday, March 1st, when Arnold Jones will speak about customer relations in the 21st century. Question 3. Your comfort is important. That's why we developed the Easy Sit Desk Chair. Its special ergonomic construction supports your posture while you sit at your desk. Its high-class design looks great in any office. Go ahead and work at your computer all day. With the Easy Sit Chair, you'll feel so comfortable you'll never want to leave your desk. But don't take our word for it. Visit your local Easy Furniture showroom and try out our chairs in person. Or phone our customer service line at 800-387-9876 for a free catalog and order form. Mention this ad and receive a 15% discount off your first in-store or catalog purchase of an Easy Sit chair. Offer ends May 20th. Question 4. Good morning and welcome to the weather update. The drought continues today with clear skies and plenty of sunshine. Temperatures will reach a high of around 85 degrees this afternoon with overnight lows in the high 60s. Expect more of the same tomorrow and for the rest of the week. 
but don't despair. Change is in the air. Over the weekend, a cold front will be moving in, bringing with it cloudy skies. So we should be getting that long-awaited rain by Sunday. Question five. If you travel frequently for business, you may find it difficult to maintain a healthful diet. When you're worn out from travel or work, you might just settle for the most convenient or cheapest meal: fast food, a salty snack, or a sweet dessert. Don't give up so easily. There is a simple way to make sure you get your basic nutrition even while on the road. The solution is to make sure to eat a big breakfast every morning. Most restaurants offer healthful breakfast choices such as cereal and eggs. By eating a big breakfast, you guarantee that you get at least one nutritious meal a day. In addition, you will have the energy to work all morning. Question six. Thank you for calling the dental office of Dr. Elizabeth Peckar. If this is an emergency, hang up immediately and contact the on-call dentist, Dr. Rogers, at three two four nine zero one four. Our normal office hours are Monday through Friday from seven thirty until four o'clock, and Saturday from nine until noon. To make an appointment for an office visit, please call back when the office is open. If you would like to speak with a doctor or any of the office staff, please leave a message after the beep, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Question seven. The fifth annual Center City Job Fair will take place this coming Saturday at the Royal Hotel from 11:30 until 4 o'clock. Representatives from more than 100 companies will be on hand to talk with you about career opportunities in their fields. Preliminary job application forms will be available, and attendees are advised to bring up to 25 copies of their resume. Throughout the day, special seminars will be offered on topics such as the successful job interview, write a winning resume, and dressing for business success. Admission is just ten dollars, and tickets will be available at the door. Don't miss the event that the Center City Daily Newspaper has called the best job fair in the country. Question eight. Welcome aboard Flight three o five to Mexico City. Our travel time today will be just under six hours, putting us in Mexico City at four fifteen. The rain clouds that were threatening us earlier have cleared up, and we should have smooth sailing all the way to our destination with bright sunny skies. If you look out the windows on the left side, you should be able to see Lake Pine in the distance. With a view of the mountains behind it, enjoy your trip and thank you for flying with us. That is the end of part one. Part two. Questions nine to twenty. In this part, you will hear three conversations. The conversations will not be repeated. There are four questions for each conversation. For each question, choose the correct answer: A, B, C, or D. Questions nine to twelve refer to the following conversation. First, take some time to read the questions nine to twelve.
Listen to a conversation between two college students. Cindy, have you heard the news? No, Steve. What do you mean? You know all the classes we missed because of the snow. Uh oh. Yep, we're going to have to make them up, and the dean says it will have to be during spring break. Steve, we have our vacation all set. What are we going to do? Do the others know? I don't know, but I certainly can't afford to miss five days of classes this semester. With that week I was sick. But I really don't want to cancel our trip. All of us have already made our plane reservations. I can try to call the travel agency. Maybe they can refund our money. But before we do anything, we need to speak with our professors. You think they'll excuse us from class? Probably not. But I was talking to Kevin this morning, and he said that one of his professors told him that they could make up the class at a different time. Wow, that's great. Which professor was it? I don't know, but we're going to have to speak to all of them anyway. Why didn't they add extra days at the end of the semester before summer classes? Because of the graduation date, which can't be changed. Are other colleges around here doing the same thing? I would imagine so. It's been such a bad winter, and we've missed too many classes. We do really need to make them up. I know, I know. I was just really looking forward to this vacation, the idea of the sun and the beach. Oh look, there's Professor Hampton right now. Come on, let's go talk to her. Questions 13 to 16 refer to the following conversation. First, take some time to read the questions 13 to 16. Listen to two students talking. Hey, Christine, remember how we were complaining that we wanted to see the drama series but couldn't afford the tickets? I found a solution. Yeah? Won the lottery, huh? Uh-uh. But seriously, I did find a way for us to see all the plays, and we don't have to pay a cent. Come on, Jim. That's impossible. No, really, we can. I called Stanhope Theater to ask if they had student discounts. They didn't. But they did have another suggestion. What's that? The man there told me they just lost four of their ushers, so they have openings. Really? Yeah. You don't get paid, but you do get to stand in the back and watch the play after you've helped everyone find their seats. No seat, but a good view. Then during intermission, you help sell refreshments. But Jim, each play is performed on six nights. Can we make that big a commitment? We don't have to. That's the best part. They have enough ushers so that each person works only two nights at the same play. I never imagined we'd be able to see the whole series. Let's take a look at the schedule right now. Questions 17 to 20 refer to the following conversation. First, Take some time to read the questions 17 to 20. Listen to a conversation between a professor and his assistant. Good morning, Hannah. Thanks for coming in. How was your holiday? It was very good, Professor. Thanks. A week in the Appalachians is really therapeutic. Nothing to do but eat, sleep, and listen to nature. It's beautiful up there in the spring. The countryside is so green and the people are so friendly and laid back. A good place to unwind. I envy you. I've just got too much to get done to get away at all now. I must get this book finished. For one thing, 
my publisher is getting impatient. I've outlined the last two chapters, though, finally, so it won't take me too much longer, I hope. Maybe I'll be able to go somewhere at Christmas. But, um, what I wanted to talk to you about is our syllabus for this term, Hannah. I know this is short notice, but I'd like to make a couple of little changes to it. Uh Uh-oh, I know your idea of little changes. No, no, I don't think it'll be that bad this time. What I'd like to do is, uh, cut lectures two and three, the ones on Old English and Middle English, down to half their length, and then meld them together into a single lecture. Then, with that extra 90 minutes, I want to add a lecture at the end on World Englishes. I think it's time we dealt with that more thoroughly, don't you? Yes, sir, I certainly do. That's a good idea. So I guess I just need to cut down the quizzes to match and add a new one for World Englishes. Do you know when I'll be able to see your revised OE and ME notes? I've already done a good bit of that revision, Hannah, and I think I'll have them ready for you before Lecture 1. That's April 8th, I think. Yes, Tuesday the 8th. I've taken the segments on pronunciation out. I think we can lose those easily enough. Nobody really needs to recite Beowulf or the Canterbury Tales anymore, no matter how much fun it is. And that means you probably won't be discussing orthography much either. I suppose not. I just want to be sure to point out clearly the main ways in which modern English has developed from its predecessors. You know, the great vowel shift and so forth. Saving 90 minutes is not going to commit Old and Middle English to total oblivion, after all. (laughs) Not if you can help it, certainly. So I can't eliminate the phonetics quiz completely, then? Yes, I think so. I'll still give them a reading so they can get a flavor of their ancestral tongue, but they can get as much of the phonetics as they want out of the textbook. And it's rote learning anyway, really. Now, what about your new lecture, then? Can I get started on any of that? Yes. That's where I could really use your help in the next couple of weeks. I need you to research pigeons and creoles for me. I've never paid enough attention to them, and I'd like an idea of the number there are, uh, their distribution, and, uh, what linguists are saying about them these days. Are they English dialects? Derivative languages? What? See if you can find some interesting examples and some specific quotes, will you? Yes, of course. I think I know the kind of thing you're looking for. I'll take a look for internet sources this afternoon and then see what the library has later. Thank you, Hannah. I'd appreciate that. And while you're there, would you see if they've got a copy of Burnley's source book on the history of English? I can't seem to find mine. Oh, uh, that's because you lent it to me last term, and, um, I haven't returned it yet. Ah, well, get it back to me sometime soon then, will you? I need to refer to it for my revisions. Yes, sir, of course. Anything else on the syllabus? Just that we'll need the student handout revised to reflect the changes. Who was in charge of that last time? The department secretary has the file. I'll draft a revision, let you check it, and then give it to her, shall I? Shouldn't take long, and we just need to get photocopies before the first class. All right. I'll leave that in your hands, too, then, Hannah. Just let me know if you need anything. And I'll see you at the faculty meeting tomorrow afternoon. Oh, yes. Yes, the faculty meeting. Oh, and if you need any anecdotes on Appalachian English dialect, I'm your girl. I've just picked up a wealth of contemporary examples. (laughs) I'll keep that in mind. Thanks, Hannah. That is the end of Part 2. Part 3 Questions 21 to 35. In this part, you will hear three talks, lectures or conversations. The talks, lectures or conversations will not be repeated. There are five questions for each talk, lecture or conversation. For each question, choose the right answer. A, B, C or D. First, take some time to read the questions 21 to 25.
Listen to a park ranger talk to a group of campers. I know you're anxious to get your permits and get started, but there are just a few things I'd like to mention that might help you avoid trouble during your stay. First of all, make sure you carry adequate water. You'll need it if you're hiking, especially in this heat. A good rule of thumb is to bring one gallon per person per day this time of year. Don't try to rely on the park's natural springs to supply all your water needs. And please, do not use soap in the springs. It's your responsibility to protect the park's natural features. For those of you staying beyond the weekend, make sure that you set up camp well away from dry creek beds. We may get some heavy rainfall, and those creek beds could quickly become filled with water, and you and all your equipment might end up washed downstream. When you pick up your permits, you'll also get a Park Services booklet. It'll tell you everything you need to know about the hiking trails. They vary in length, of course, but most of them are under five miles, relatively easy day hikes. Remember, if you're hiking solo, make sure you let someone know you're going and when they can expect you back. And uh, for your own safety, we recommend that you not climb rock faces. A lot of the rock throughout the park is very unstable. One final word. Watch out for poisonous snakes. Rattlesnake activity is at its peak this time of year, especially at night. For your own good, we recommend wearing protective clothing. And carry a flashlight after dark. Take some time to read the questions 26 to 30. Listen to part of a lecture on child psychology. Today we're going to talk about shyness and discuss recent research on ways to help children learn to interact socially. Many people consider themselves shy. In fact, 40% of the people who took part in our survey said they were shy. That's two out of every five people. And there are studies to indicate that the tendency toward shyness may be inherited. But just because certain children are timid doesn't mean they are doomed to be shy forever. There are things parents, teachers, and the children themselves can do to overcome this tendency, and even to prevent it. One researcher found that if parents gently push their shy children to try new things, they can help these children become less afraid and less inhibited. Another way to help shy children is to train them in social skills, for example, there are special training groups where children are taught things like looking at other children while talking to them, talking about other people's interests, and even smiling. These groups have been very successful at giving shy children a place to feel safe and accepted, and at building up their self-esteem. Take some time to read the questions 31 to 35. Listen to part of a lecture in social science class. Today we're going to begin with a short quiz. No, no, you don't need pencil and paper, just listen. It's only one question. Ready? Okay. What do blogs, Pokemon, tattoos, Cabbage Patch Kids, Pet Rocks, and Hula Hoops have in common? 
Anybody? They're all stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Professor Morgan. They're all fads. Correct. Now here's another question. How did you know that? In other words, what are the characteristics of a fad, and what's the difference between a fad and a trend? These are the questions we're going to consider together this afternoon. Well, the main difference I think between a fad and a trend concerns time. A fad is something that seems to appear suddenly. It quickly becomes enormously popular, then disappears just as suddenly as it came. A trend also appears rather suddenly, and it also becomes very popular, but it doesn't disappear. A trend can have a long-term influence on its particular market. Fads and trends often resemble each other at first glance, but a fad usually has a definite beginning and end. Um, Pokemon might be a fad, but the idea of fancy playing cards for children might be a trend, for example. Another difference is that fads usually stay within one industry. Trends can cross over into many industries. The hula hoop, for instance, has been called the greatest fad of all time. 25 million. In the late 1950s, 25 million hula hoops were sold in just four months. But a year later, sales had virtually stopped. The hula hoop was a toy. It was fun to play with, but that's about all. Now consider cell phones. They were designed to be portable telephones, but they crossed over into the worlds of fashion, wireless communication, and now even photography. People buy cell phones that match the latest clothes fashions. They use cell phones for wireless internet access. They take photos with them. Cell phones have become a trend. <clears throat> Here's the third difference between fads and trends. How well industries accept them. Fads are often promoted by smaller companies. They need the quick money that fads provide. Large companies don't accept fads right away. They can't afford to be wrong. If someone, if a company is known as a trendsetter and it promotes a fad, its reputation will be damaged. Large companies buy products in huge numbers. They don't want unsold products sitting on their shelves. So they wait to see if a fad becomes a trend. Then they will accept it in their stores. Now, yes. How long does a fad have to last before it becomes a trend? I mean, there are all these energy drinks now. There used to be only a couple, but now there's like a hundred. Are they still a fad? Exercise is a trend, so wouldn't energy drinks be part of the exercise trend? That's an excellent question. When exactly does a fad become a trend? You know, there are some people who are paid a lot of money to answer that question. If they get it right, companies become rich and famous. If they get it wrong, companies go bankrupt and careers get ruined. The short answer is, nobody knows. Distinguishing between fads and trends is an art, not a science. If it were easy, there would be a lot more rich people in the world. Yes, in the back. Yeah, um, can't people get rich from fads too? You said they sold 25 million hula hoops in four months. Someone must have made big money off that. Yes, they did. Toy companies made uh, $45 million off of hula hoops by the time the fad ended. And maybe some of you have heard of pet rocks in the 1970s. A man bought a rock for a penny, put it in a gift box, and marketed it as a pet. He became an instant millionaire. But the problem, the trouble with fads is, no one can predict them. This man had no idea that so many people would buy rocks as pets. He started it as kind of a joke. The Pokemon creators had no clue their cards would become instantly popular all over the world. That's the thing. Fads are mysterious to both their creators and to the public. This is the end of the listening paper. Now. You have five minutes to transfer your answers to your answer sheet.